Hi, everybody. I'm wearing my Mardi Gras bling today, even though not much of a Mardi Gras in Rochester. Um, we have been preparing for the giant winter storm that most of the nation has been preparing for. So I went out yesterday and I had not cleared off my two, I call it my parking lot. It's a little parking pad for, uh, it says for two cars, but you could really fit three on there if you put two in vertically and one horizontally. But it, anyway, I digress. Uh, it had not been cleared off with any of the snow that we've had thus far. So I was out there for an hour and a half yesterday, snow blowing, got the whole thing cleared, parked my car in there because I don't like to park on the street in the winter, but especially those of you who've been around for a while, especially since my last car got run over by an 18 wheeler sitting in front of my house, parked, legally parked on the street. So for snowy conditions, I like to put it in the, the parking pad, parking lot. And so I got that already yesterday, only to awaken this morning to discover that uh, the storm missed us and I'm not complaining. Um, we have some freezing rain and um, some ice, icy conditions, but very little snow came with this. I'm looking at the top of my car, maybe maybe four inches. Hard to tell. Not very much for winter in Rochester. I think now we have probably a total of maybe 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 a foot. It's drifted in some places a little more than that, but maybe about a foot of snow. Not much for February, and I'm not complaining. But I got to thinking about this whole thing about near misses with storms and the preparations that we do that we never need and the fact that we just feel better doing the preparations even if the storm doesn't come to fruition and we're grateful for that. Uh, and I'm sure all of you across the country face this, whether it's with snow or, you know, a hurricane alert or a tornado alert that doesn't manifest. And... Um, I just wanted to talk about that a little bit in terms of how uh, it can inform our spirituality because I think I think that's kind of how we go through life um, if we're smart. We prepare for storms, for spiritual storms. We prepare for uh, upsetting times. I've always said that I thought that faith was kind of like an insurance policy. You know, we pay into it. We we put our time into it, developing it for when we'll really need it. And um, yeah, I know my kids could never understand why I'd say, go to the doctor when you're well, or start therapy when you don't need it, or, you know, just all of these things, uh, sort of proactive, preventative things. Because when the time comes that you do need it. You will al already have the relationship with that practitioner. You'll, they will know you, you will know them, you know, you can trust them, you know, that whole thing that parents sometimes do. Um, I think it's that way about our faith too. I think that um, the more, the more we invest in our own spiritual development in spiritual routines and spiritual disciplines, the more they just become second nature to us and we don't have to think about them. They're just there when we need them. Um, and I've watched it change over time with people. I think, I think most folks um, at South Church would agree that we pray a lot more than we did when I arrived in 2008. And now it's to the point where if our uh, elders are at meetings at the Presbytery level or whatever, I get the feedback from other people is so-and-so one of yours? And I'll say, usually it's yes. And they'll say, I thought so. And I'll, I, you know, I'll ask why. And they say, oh, they always want to pray. <laughs> Thinking, oh, that's not a bad thing. And that's not a bad thing to be known for. Um, I guess that's, if that's my career uh, legacy, okay, I can live with that. But in terms of our own lives, the storms that come toward us and that miss us, how do we prepare for them? And um, how do we move on afterwards? And do we hold on to the fear that they're going to come back? Do I worry that the storm that didn't hit me yesterday is going to, you know, double back around and come back at me um, today? No, I think there's another one coming up the, up the coast or whatever, but 
that's a different storm. And yet how many of us, if we're faced with some sort of upset, we're like holding on for dear life because we're so afraid it's going to come back and, and get us again. You know, it didn't hit us that time. Yeah, but wait, just wait. Waiting for the other shoe to fall kind of thing. Waiting to exhale. No, I can't trust it. You know, I think maybe we should just become more like meteorologists. Check all the conditions prepare for what we think is going to happen. And when it doesn't say, weren't we lucky? Weren't we lucky that didn't happen? Are the preparations for naught? Of course not. My house is all stocked now. I don't have to go to the store in the next few days because I have everything that I need. I, you know, I'm a rural upstate New York gal. I hear a storm's coming. Oh, I stock in everything that I need for four or five days to live without going out if I have to. We plan ahead and it's never lost. Kind of like when we love somebody, you know, love is never lost. It's never wasted. No matter what happens to that relationship. Preparing for the storm, it's never wasted. Relationships, whatever we invest, never wasted. Especially our relationship with God. Just think about that for a little bit. So what's the weather where you are today? What are you looking forward to in, in your day? Are you planning ahead for it? What if everything changes just like that? It's not wasted planning, is it? You got everything organized in your mind and in your heart. Let's apply that to God, to our spiritual lives, even when it's Mardi Gras. And it's like, for some, the last hurrah before uh, Ash Wednesday and Lent begins tomorrow. Just a word about that. I don't personally believe in self-abnegation when it comes to Lent. I just think that that's the wrong focus for me and for many people I know that it should not be about doing without. It should be adding something extra in. I'll talk more about this tomorrow. Um, but be thinking about maybe this spiritual connection with God that we're focused on today. Maybe that could become a practice for you over the next six weeks during Lent that would start tomorrow. Um, how is it that you are building up a relationship for when you really need it? Or how is it that you can deepen the relationship that you have to meet the challenges that lie ahead for you in life? Because we all have them. And we rarely know when they're going to happen. We don't have good meteorologists, <laughs> spiritual meteorologists in our life. Maybe that should be the title for today, spiritual meteorologists. <laughs> but um, the Holy Spirit is a good spiritual meteorologist. If we pay attention, we can kind of tell what we need in advance, work on it, build it up, and be prepared. Okay, everybody. That's the message for today. I hope you have a great day. Very gloomy and overcast here. We probably will get a little more of the storm, but nothing like it was supposed to be. And for that, we give thanks. Hope you have a great day, a safe day. Be well. And, um, Get your shot when you can. I haven't gotten mine yet, but I'm working on it. It's just a full-time effort <laughs> to work on it. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> I'll see you next time. God bless. Take care. Bye for now.